Are you still connected to Islam? Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, I was looking forward to this interview and it gets better and better the more that we speak. I, I, you know, you are, you're, you're, you're homegrown. You came up in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s in Harlem for real. Like this is the crack era. This is, this is Harlem for real. Yes, and sir. as I'm listening to you talk, and far too often, especially within our community, you know, the, the mother, that's the pillar. That's the, that's the person that holds the family together. That's the person that is uh, around and you have the most relation with in terms of your upbringing. But I hear you speak with so much reverence about your father, a black man, somebody who was ahead of their time. And, it, you know, he passed when you were, what, 17 years old? Yeah, 18. 18 years. This is, this is a guy that instilled so much into you in a very, very short amount of time. And I love to hear this because whenever fathers, it doesn't matter the race, but when Black fathers step up and they produce products like yourself. I just think it's so admirable. And I'm glad that you took a moment to just share with us who he was and what he meant to you. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that because, you know, one of the things I love doing is, especially even to this day, Sunday mornings, I love walking around Harlem on Sunday mornings. And for some reason, Sundays are always quiet because Saturday's the bang, bang night. <laughs> so, um, and one thing I observed on Sunday mornings and sometimes during the week is I would just be, you know, maybe because of the, the influence my father had me, I always was not blown away, but it stood out how many Black men I saw with their kids, even young Black men. I love it. You know, hip jeans down, whatever. I would always be walking around. I'm seeing all of these black men with their kids. And I'm like, this don't fit the narrative that I keep hearing. Um, not saying that there aren't men that aren't doing their job, but from what I can see, there are a lot of men who are doing their job. Yes, so indeed. I don't, you know, yes, my father was special. And I say he was special as far as just his foresight and understanding that it takes a village. Um, and teaching me about my ancestry and, 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 and all of that. But there's a lot of black men out there who are fathers, wonderful fathers and doing the do, but their stories aren't highlighted. It doesn't fit the narrative. So they're, they're, they're swept under the rug. Yeah, but that's why it's so important for people like yourself to share that part of the story because it's, it's necessary. It really is because the, the, the broader lens of this nation will vilify, demonize, and make you believe that within our community, there are not a lot of Black fathers who are stepping up. And I know that to be false, just like you. So I, I, again, I thank you for sharing that. Uh, you are 113th in what, St. Nick? Yeah. Where'd you go to school? Because you're a local boy. Yeah. So I, you know, like I first of all, I was homeschooled. So really at that those three buildings, we had a school in there. So everybody was homeschooled. We had a, a, a teacher who taught us. My father taught Arabic, science, and history. And then we had another teacher, sister. She taught everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we were homeschooled up until the sixth grade. So then after sixth grade. I went to public school. I first went to, uh, uh, my father did research. He sent me to a place called a computer school, which was a small school inside a school called IS-44 on 77 between Columbus and Amsterdam. We, we were in the basement learning about computers before computers were big. Um, and I went to that school. And then when I graduated from there, I went to Manhattan Center for Math and Science on 116th and First Avenue uh, in, in East Harlem. Okay, stop there for a second. Manhattan Center. That's Dame Dash. That's I was in that's, school. That's Mace, I think. Cam, Cam. Yep. So Ooh. I was I was in school with with Dame. Um, 
there's a lot of other legends that came from there, some basketball players. Um, uh, I was, I was Mason, all of them came after I graduated, but I was in there with, with some, a lot of, a lot of dudes. <laughs> wow. How about that? Um, you play sports while you were there? Yeah. I play football. Start? Starting quarterback. Get out of here. Yes, sir. Are you serious? Yeah. Went eight and zero out JV season. Uh, when I went to varsity, I broke my thumb, I think at the first game. And then the next year broke my ribs, collapsed lung into my football season. <laughs> Got it. So high school was pretty good for you. You, you, you starting quarterback in Manhattan center. Like you're pretty popular in that school. Absolutely. How does a person like you, number one, because I know your backstory, you served in Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from as opposed to continuing your education? Because most people at that point, they're thinking, you know, let me go to college. Let me try to get this full ride. Maybe I got a shot at the NFL. Where, where does your life switch? Yeah, I had, go, I had all those dreams. I thought I was going to the NFL. Um, my senior year, once I broke my ribs, collapsed my lung, that was also the year my father passed away. Um, so then that's where all the guidance kind of fell out the bag, where um, I was injured, I couldn't play football. Um, as a dare, I took a dance class, I fell in love with African dance my senior year. And when graduation came, because I had messed up after my father passed away, I had to go to summer school. Mm -hmm. I, think I, I was accepted to Hampton a school in Atlanta, a school in Pennsylvania, and I think Cornell, but all of them required me to go to summer school. Um, that same summer, my dance company, repertory dance company of East Harlem was going to France. Um, so I didn't have nobody to guide me. I was like, I'm not going to summer school. Um, I fell in love with dance. Football was in the rear mirror. So I went to France with my dance company. Um, when I came back from France, you know, I did what everybody else did, got the jobs, athletes foot, Yankee Stadium. And it was just one, at one moment, I was like, this ain't cutting it. Like, this is not what I want to do with my life. And uh, I just jumped up and joined the Marine Corps. It was gone the next day. And, and it just happened like that. It's crazy because I'm from the Bronx and um, you just mentioned Yankee Stadium. I used to work at Yankee Stadium <laughs> too. <laughs> Selling sodas. Yeah, ice cream, ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you jump up, you join, you join the Marines. Yes, sir. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't, because I was going to go into this Marine story, but I can't let this thing pass. How tall are you? Six feet. You're six feet tall. You're an athlete. Mm -hmm. I, I heard you say that you did it on a dare, but dancing. African dance at that, that ain't cool. Like you really did that on a dare and fell in love with it? Yeah, I, I remember there was a poster on the, you know, they used to cover up the window cause all the dudes used to walk by, look in the window, look at the girls. Yeah. And on it, they used to cover it up with posters and one poster had Herschel Walker and, and, a, and, a, and tights with a ballerina. And I was like, oh, Herschel Walker do it. I was like, he a football player. I was like, there's girls in there, F that. I'm 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 gonna take this dance class, and something about the African drum. I mean, to this day, I mean, you know, I went to Ghana last year. Just something about the African drum and the connection to Africa, and and um, that just it it overpowered my love for football. Um, and I can't explain it. It, it. it wasn't even no second thoughts. I just I just jumped into it, and I didn't even think. You know, you know. I remember dancing. A lot of people used to tease you, call you gay, and yep. but. I had came like, again, I came from this community where we had got bullied our whole life just from being Muslim and wearing, having a different, like, we didn't have TVs in our house. We had to eat kosher foods. I had whole wheat bread. I had natural peanut butter. I had rice cakes. I had tofu. So I had been getting teased all my life. So when it came to taking dance, I didn't care if you called me gay. I didn't care if you teased me. I, like I said, I was the quarterback on the team. Nobody who was gonna step to me. And if somebody mm -hmm. did, I was used to defending myself and and my beliefs and 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 believing and doing what I wanted to do. So that wasn't even a question. I then, I mean, if you 
you do some research, you could speak to anybody in my high school. I went from the quarterback being the star to dancing at assemblies and being having the same star power. So it was like even was, while in high school. Yeah. Man, that's 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 a huge transition. Was you wearing them same tights? Yeah, I had like in my dance, I couldn't just do African dance. I did my dance teacher made me do modern. But here's the thing. I'll never forget, my African dance teacher was a black man named Al. This dude was built like Emmett Smith. He was just diesel, big, huge, flexible. And it was a black man doing African dance. So that might have also helped because I was, I was like, oh, wow, okay, this is, you know, and he seemed heterosexual. So it was like, it was a smooth transition. Um, but it was it, it just came natural man it was it was it was just in my dna i mean you i know, did 15 years after that what's up guys thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video truly appreciate you if you like anything you heard here today go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you know anybody that can benefit from this message feel free to share peace and love make every move a power move and i catch you all on the next video